In this video, we discuss the last conversion unit that uses straight run gasoline as a feedstock. This process is called catalytic reforming. Shown now on screen, a simplified process scheme for the gas and gasoline cuts treating plant. The feedstock for a catalytic reformer is heavy gasoline or heavy naphtha, recovered at the bottom of the gasoline splitter, as highlighted here. This feed is essentially made of C7 to C11 hydrocarbons. Refiners use catalytic reformers to address both quality and quantity concerns. As seen here, the octane number of the feed is between 20 and 50. The product of the catalytic reformer, also called reformate, has an octane number of 100. This conversion process significantly upgrades the octane number and yields an excellent quality blending component for gasoline. The following table illustrates a typical catalytic reformer feed composition. The feed comprises of C7 to C11 hydrocarbons. This hydrocarbon mixture is rich in normal paraffins and naphthenes. The feed also contains small amounts of isoparaffins and aromatics. The catalytic reforming process chemically reshapes the composition of the feed. The typical composition of the reformate is shown now on screen. Reformates are rich in aromatics and isoparaffins. These hydrocarbon molecules have good octane numbers. You can see now some examples of chemical reactions occurring in the catalytic reforming process. Cyclohexane, an aphthene, is converted into benzene, an aromatic, with the release of hydrogen. Normal butane, a normal paraffin, is converted into isobutane, an isoparaffin. The latter reaction is quite similar to what occurs in a type 1 isomerization process. Recall, isomerization was discussed in a previous video. Another example is the conversion of hexane, a normal paraffin, into cyclohexane, an aphthene, with the release of hydrogen. Overall, the catalytic reformer converts many hydrocarbons present in the feed into isoparaffins or aromatics. These hydrocarbon intermediates have a good octane number, making the final product, reformate, an ideal blending component for gasoline. Let's now shift our attention to the process that causes all these chemical changes. What is needed is an exceptional catalyst. In most cases, refineries use platinum. It is for this particular reason that catalytic reformers are usually called platformers and reformate referred to as platformate. In the presence of a platinum catalyst, paraffins will wrap themselves in cycles and release hydrogen. In the refining industry, there exists two ways to put the heavy gasoline feed in contact with the platinum catalyst. These two process technologies are the fixed bed catalytic reforming and the continuous bed catalytic reforming. In this video, we discuss the continuous process only. In a continuous bed catalytic reforming, three reactors are stuck on top of each other. The platinum catalyst circulates through the three reactors by gravity. It drops from top to bottom between two concentric pipes made of a fine mesh. The heavy naphtha feed is first introduced to a furnace where it is heated. Next, the feed passes through the mesh of the first reactor and enters in contact with the falling platinum catalyst. The chemical reaction takes place. The mixture then exits the first reactor and is reintroduced back to the furnace. Once reheated, the mixture is sent to the second reactor. The same process happens again. The mixture is reintroduced back to the furnace, then to the third reactor. After exiting the third reactor, the product called reformate is cooled. Hydrogen is separated and the treated reformate feeds a debutanizer. The debutanizer separates the reformate from potential light byproducts. The spent catalyst exiting the bottom of the third reactor is sent to a catalyst regenerator, where it is treated with oxygen to get rid of potential contaminants and coke. Finally, hot hydrogen at the bottom of the regenerator carries the regenerated catalyst back to the reaction section. This was a simplified overview of a continuous catalytic reforming process 
widely spread in the refining industry. Keep in mind that this process is used to upgrade the poor quality of the heavy naphtha feed in terms of octane number to an excellent quality reefer mate, ideal for gasoline blending. The quality upgrade is a result of chemically reforming hydrocarbons in the heavy naphtha feed into isoparaffins and aromatics in the final reefer mate product. However, although this conversion process is a necessity for all refiners, it does have a major drawback. Due to the chemical reshaping of hydrocarbons, the reefer mate is rich in benzene. Benzene is a highly hazardous chemical. It is subject to numerous restrictions and specifications regarding its allowable content in gasoline and other petroleum products. For this reason, refiners have to be very careful when operating their catalytic reformers. Refiners pay a particular attention to the benzene content in reefer made and in gasoline. This is an important quality consideration to remain in line with the tight specifications on benzene and make on spec petroleum products. To deal with this concern and the increasing severity in benzene specifications, refiners have developed several options. Removing the type of hydrocarbons in the reformer feed that will form benzene is the first option. The precursors to benzene include normal hexane and cyclohexane. The second option consists in removing the benzene from the reefer mate by means of a benzene extraction process. This option is often selected when the refinery is located next to a petrochemical plant. In this configuration, benzene can be used as a building block for a variety of petrochemicals, such as polystyrene or nylon. You can find more about this in our course on petrochemicals. The third option consists in hydro-treating the reefer mate by adding excess hydrogen. This will convert benzene into cyclohexane. The last option for a refiner that does not want to invest in a benzene extraction process is to reduce the severity of the catalytic reformer. This is usually accomplished by lowering the operating temperature and pressure, or simply by using a less reactive catalyst. In all cases, keep in mind here that all of these options will undoubtedly undermine the quality of reefer mate. Now that we have seen the major conversion processes used in petroleum refineries to upgrade and convert the naphtha cut, let's move on to the next petroleum cut given by the atmospheric distilling column, kerosene and gas oil, and discuss how they are treated in downstream processes.